Welcome. 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 Welcome to. Welcome to. Smartless. I feel like I want to get into talking to you guys. I really do. I miss you. Sean, I, I owe you a call. I know that you FaceTimed me the other night, and I never called you back, and I'm just That's realizing okay. that now. That's okay. And, and I miss you desperately. I miss you guys, too. And are you okay in Chicago? Oh, Will, William, thank you. Yes, are I'm you? okay. I mean, it's other than the sirens going off every single day. Every fucking night. And the guy across the, across the hall from us has a dog. And they leave their door open, and it barks so loud, it sounds like it's in our apartment. And, the, and oh. then it gets all the dogs down the whole, the whole hallway going. Every dog starts barking. <laughs> Wait, have you talked to him about it or yeah. no. given him a hairy eyeball on the elevator at least? No, I, I don't. How, what are you guys about masks? Like people in, the, in this building. On still, dogs? No. <laughs> <laughs> They are carriers. What no, are like, I, like some people in the building don't wear masks anymore, and some people are like, oh, the mandate's over, so... I would like to do it based on how they look. Like, ooh, you need a mask. You, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, what else? I always forget to bring a meal to rehearsal, too. So I'm kind of hungry all the time. We only get 20-minute breaks. Mm -hmm. So if I run home, isn't this an amazing story? If it's I run home. relatable. Maybe the soldiers <laughs> in the Ukraine would like to hear about your 20-minute breaks. Yeah, maybe they want and to talk no, about your tech snacks rehearsal. Snacks aren't great. <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, wait, are you going to start complaining about your blocking next? Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> wait, take it up with the director. <laughs> we don't want to hear about the blocking on your No, play. so I have 20 minutes. I don't know what to do. I never have. It's Anyway, I'm always hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Jason? Um, I don't have any complaints. I just feel for my fellow citizens around the world. Um, Likewise. Gosh. Sean, you would have loved it last night. I had Jason's wife, Amanda, here at the house and his uh, daughter, Maple. But no, Jason. To have dinner with my folks. And not Jason. No, No, because, you, you know, because today is Saturday. Yesterday was a work day. Um, so you're starting dinner at five o'clock. That means I still got two hours of work left. Um, By the way, what a joke says the, says the guy who since January 1st has played 34 days of golf and none of them on the weekend, by the way, because he's not allowed to play on the weekend. Cause that's family so time. So let's talk about work that's days. Wait, isn't that a new, is that a new rule? It is a new rule and I feel good about it. Uh, and that's I'm nice. also a new rule is, uh, <laughs> This is also something our really <laughs> citizens relatable. in strife around the world. Does it gonna... have to do with your Tesla? Go ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's I'm I'm going to not play every day. Okay. Oh uh, wow! No. <laughs> you know the term <laughs> "hero" gets used a lot, no, but I listen, mean in this case. Listen, we actors uh, are you know it's not we're not it's it's easy. Okay, and people yeah. that say, "Oh, it's so hard," and the hours are so. Just, please, we're so lucky to be doing. But what let me we're tell doing. you something. When when I run lines with Scotty, uh, just from to memorize lines, run lines. Sure. Tracy is like you run lines, like you memorize lines. Mm -hmm. And he, I have such a short temper with him, and it's it has nothing to do with him. But I'm like, okay, so I come in and I say, "Oh, relax." Okay, then I say, well, "Yeah, yeah," but it's only four lou lousy hours. What can go wrong? And he says, "No, it's." I go, "Go back." Go back to the previous line. <laughs> I can't read. Does he correct you on, on every word, every syllable? Yeah. yeah. And does he come to rehearsal and sit out in the audience? And does he, do you go line and Scotty's there? <laughs> no, for the actual performances. Do you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Can he maybe have like a fanny pack that's got snacks in it or something for you? I know. Oh, that's a good Scotty, idea. Can you make me a, a fanny pack with snacks? A, a pack snack. A snack. You know, it's almost a like he's walking pack. you. Like he's a dog walker, but for you. And he's got a fanny pack and he could have some wipes and stuff. It's a snacky you. pack. <laughs> wipes. Scotty with a snacky pack. We tried to buy Sean that toilet too, and then it it wouldn't work, right? Sean? Yeah. What's Jason and I wanted to buy you a fancy toilet. I know it? that was so nice. Yeah, listen, yeah. so when we were on the tour, you'd learn a lot about someone when you're living with them, and uh, and sweet, sweet Sean, um, <laughs> as privileged as he sounds with this past five minutes, um, mm -hmm. he was completely unaware that the 
uh, the toilets with the washlet has snuck up on him, and he'd <laughs> never heard of it before. You know, the, the, those Toto toilets that, like, Most people uh, shoot know. a geyser yeah. in you. and it, Well, no, I mean, people know about them. Not a lot of people have them, but, I mean, it's like it's this bizarre new a, technology in... Um, it's a bidet built into the bath. Yeah, right. so we tried to buy... Jason and I tried to, after learning... Of, Sean didn't know. For we tried his to, birthday. I came out of the bathroom. I was, like, in awe. I was like, oh, my God, there's these switches it can clean your ass and then it blow dries yeah, we were your ass. staying in a hotel that had one and he couldn't believe it and we're like come on you'd never so we know that he well he's away in chicago he's re doing some remodeling in the in the castle yeah. there in la and so we tried to <laughs> arrange with his husband yeah. to get a new toy toy put in there and right. it ended up being more expensive well, than the toilet toy, itself toy toy, toy, toy. you had to tear down the wall and to go into the pipes and everything but it's the thought that counts and you guys are so sweet to think of that and i was gonna get you guys porsches but I, it oh. just didn't work out. Well, there's still time. There's still time. Maybe try it's again. The thought. It's the thought. Speaking of <laughs> yeah. still time, we're running out of time because we have a great guest here who has been really biding his time waiting and, and being know. so gracious. Sorry, that's my fault. And and he, this is somebody who can relate to actor problems because this is a person who's been acting at a high level for longer than the three of us have ever, you know, even known what the hell was going on in the world. This is somebody who uh, started on the stage to great acclaim, moved into films, has made countless films over the year at the highest level. Great Dick Van performances. Dyke. Not Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> Not only that, he and I have starred together, as it turns out, in three oh. pictures together, oh. um, which does only brings him down and props me up uh, and makes me look good. Mm -hmm. and he's somebody that I've just admired for so long because he's such an incredible actor and uh, he's the star of the nut job the nut job 2 the lego movie also perhaps schindler's list the taken movies oh honest good thief he's Lord. got a new film coming out memory what? you guys it's this mr a real liam star. Neeson. Liam that's Neeson. a real no movie star Whoa. right there <laughs> hey sean wow good morning look at this i did love listening to you I did love listening to you. I swear. <laughs> sorry Porsches. about that. Jason, you play golf. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm only because I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand how the common man lives his life. He's you sorry know? for you. He said. Did you hear that? He said that he already feels pity for you, Jason. I know. I'm embarrassed, but I do it. I do it for the mental anguish of it. Yes. it to me, it's yes. work. It's very right. hard to do. Yeah, very believable. Uh, anyway, I still don't think. As George know. Bernard Shaw once said, "It's a good walk ruined." That's right. <laughs> it's true. That's part of the job, trying to stay positive. We've had our first George Bernard Shaw quote. On, you have already classed us up uh, a million percent, Liam. Thank you so much for being here, man. It's such an incredible honor. I'm very honored myself, and I'm very, very fucking nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. Liam, let me start by this, because this is an area that Sean loves the most, which is uh, our stories from the theater. And you have yes. a long history of performing in the theater for many years. Yeah. So, Sean, I'm going to give you the opportunity oh my God. to right <laughs> off the bat ask Liam a, a theater question, your your most prized theater question. Well, now I'm put on the spot. First of all, I can't believe I'm talking to you. I know. I can, I like, and I've never met you. This is so awesome. This is so cool. And I'm nervous a little Nor bit. me, yeah. So <laughs> my question to you is, what is your favorite tragic theater story? I've said, oh, Jesus. I've said so I'm many sorry, of mine Liam. on here. I'm trying to think of another one. Well, I can tell you another one. Kristen, I did a play with Kristen Chenoweth years ago. Yes. <laughs> the listeners are so sick of me talking about it. And at the end of uh, the show, we come up for our bows, and I look over from opposite wings, and Kristen and I are supposed to come from opposite sides of the stage, meet in the middle, walk down the center, and take our bow together. Complicated. And I... <laughs> Never seen that before. <laughs> these, so these these are the these are the curtain calls, huh? Yeah, walk us <laughs> the through the bows, right? Okay. So. Did, into, did you bump into each other? <laughs> or how do you avoid that? What were your two characters' name? We promises and promises, right? Are those the two characters? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Sean. Okay. Going, Sean. Classy so, guest. So, so I look over and Kristen's not there. And I'm like, oh, my God, everybody's clapping, waiting for us to come out. I'm like, where's Kristen? And I look over, and she's dead passed out on the side. <laughs> on the floor, passed out on what? the floor. What? And I'm like, what the hell happened to Kristen Chenoweth? And so I'm like, stage manager, I'm like, do I go out? Do I wait for her? What's happening? They're trying to revive her, get her back up. So I went out and took my bow by myself. And You're thinking, wow, I'm getting double the applause today. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so then, so then what was, she. What happened to her? She they, she passed out because she um, didn't eat that day. So they gave oh her a candy gosh. bar, and she like came back to. She did a whole show and then yeah. passed out at the end. Oh my gosh! When when is the last time you did a live theater per show? Oh my god, um, fourteen years ago, oh. I did a little. Samuel Beckett piece called oh, yeah. A Jew. Uh, it lasts about 25 minutes. I don't <laughs> say a word. That's one of the reasons I took the job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and Ray Fiennes was, was uh, it, it was an evening of Beckett pieces uh, uh -huh. at Lincoln Center. Mm -hmm. That was the last time. And do you want to do it again? Or you're like, no, I'm good. The, the muse is gone from me. It's left me completely. Really? I, yeah, I, I, and it's, I, I don't, I used to worry about it because I started off in the theater for four years, just nothing but the theater, and did the odd play and the Crucible and this Beckett piece. And then about three, four years ago, it just, the muse just left me. I was offered some stuff, and it's just, I love seeing my friends do it. I love. You're talking about the muse for theater. Muse for theater, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. But but you know, I hear people say that about theater because the, the 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 schedule is really really challenging. But the movies you are doing are so demanding. Are, you cannot mm -hmm. ask for a harder yeah. genre for you to do, and you do it. But you, I, I can understand maybe one out of every five films you're out there doing all the all the action stuff. But my God, the the amount of stamina that you must have, and work ethic you have, and discipline that you have, and and the the shape you must be in, it's so incredibly admirable. Uh, well, thank you. It's not you know, a nice little a nice little three act drama down down the street. Um, I mean, come on, you you need you need a break. Yeah, I. I'm, uh... I, well, maybe some um, little farce comedy, you know, some yeah. uh, some sort of French farce, you know, Noises a bunch, off. yeah, a bunch of doors slamming, bunch of grab ass. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> stuff, that stuff's hard to do, you know. <laughs> Is it timing wise? <laughs> and, uh, or get yourself a podcast, Liam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Come on, look how cozy this is. Liam, I'm going to tell you something. I'm 51, almost 52, and he I'm plays 36. So let's he plays plays 36. Let's talk about age. Well, well, we won't talk about age, but I'll tell you this. I read a script the other day. They said, um, take a look at this. They send you their interest. And I read it, and the first scene said exterior night, and I said, I'm not interested. <laughs> 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 That's a true story. <laughs> Liam doesn't care about that. Yeah, I no, mean, it does take no. a lot, those films you do. Look, we've all done it. We, You know, it's... it's um, it takes a village, right? Yeah. Um, I have a little routine when I'm doing one. I get up, I, I exercise for 30, 35 minutes maximum. That's it. No more than that. And, uh, you know, when you're doing the junkets and stuff, say, oh, you do your own stunts. And I always, I always say to them, please listen to me. I do not do my own stunts. I don't <laughs> do that at all. <laughs> I do my own fighting. That uh -huh. I like to do. Yeah. Uh, but stunts, no. You know, jumping out of windows and wait, falling wait, over wait, chairs. Wait, 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 wait. So you're doing your own fighting? Yeah, the fighting's no bargain. That that's that's not simple. Yeah, yeah but it's it's like learning a dance, Jason. You, you, you must yeah, have but it's still. Like I, I did actually. The last big fight I did was with Will Arnett on Arrested Development. It was supposed to be. It was supposed to be funny because it lasted so long. You know, two idiots <laughs> that don't really know how to fight. They just end up on the floor <laughs> right. wrestling, and they kept cutting back to the scene, and we're still throwing. So it, we had to shoot it over the course of like I don't know. It was like a fifteen minute. Fight. It literally put me in the hospital. It we did. had to shut yeah. down for a few weeks because I was so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and this was, this was twenty years I'm ago. A lot to handle. You'd say that right. you're a lot to. Yeah. You got a real back on you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Um, you play golf every day. I play golf. Fit, now I on. only play nine holes a day. I can't walk eighteen. No, that's right. not true. Right. But Jay, I asked you about that last, the last episode of the latest Ozark chunk. Yes. Where the guy comes in and beats the crap out of you. I'm like, was that you? And you're like. No, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I, for a while there, I kind of thought, oh no, I'm gonna, I, if there's some kind of a stunt, I want to do it. Be kind of, and then, and then a stunt coordinator took me aside one day and he said, hey guy, I, I know you're trying to do the right thing for camera and everything by having it be your face, but you know you're taking money out of this guy's pocket over here who's just standing on the set ready to double you, That's and true. and he gets paid for every take. 
So if you yeah. just sit there and try to be a hero, this guy's trying to make a living too. And I was like, oh. So uh, I, I learned that lesson early on. Liam, I'm sure you learned it way before I And he's going to make you look good. Exactly. Too, you know? Yeah, he's going to make you look good. For, yeah, on top yeah. of it all. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when Will kind of said that you guys uh, it, on nut jobs, up, you've got to look for some of those jobs sometimes that are nice and cushy, maybe just with a microphone, preferably like, a, like an animated film. But... Uh, even if it's on camera, maybe some sort of nice domestic, uh, you know, dramedy or something. Yeah, but I don't get to kill people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a dream sequence right in the middle of like a Thanksgiving yeah. dinner, you know. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Um, Liam, wait. You touched on something I wanted to ask you about, which was, you know, obviously you've done tons and tons of such phenomenal work in your life and your career. And, you know, one of, one of the biggest ones out of all of them was, of course, Schindler's List and with Ray Fiennes. And then here I am years and years later watching Clash of the Titans. And it wasn't <laughs> until the end of the movie I was like, oh, wait, those two were in Schindler's List, too. <laughs> like, that's how great you are. I completely forgot that you both were in another movie together. And I, so do you have a relationship with Rafe? Like, did you know him? Did you build a friendship? No, no, Rafe's a, he's a really, really good friend. But I remember when we shot that, that was the first... We did two, uh, t uh, Clash of the Titans and uh, Wrath of the Titans, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one was, uh, it was uh, nearly 13 years ago. But when Rafe comes on, he's playing Hades, you know, the god of hell. And I'm Zeus, the god of gods. And yeah, I love he that. comes and he's my brother. I couldn't do the scene. I couldn't look him straight in the eyes. I had to keep looking at his forehead. <laughs> why? Why to make you laugh? Why? Because he kept cracking you up. Well, we just, you know, we're dressed in wigs and beards and all this <laughs> stuff, and it's like, it's like, oh, come on. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I couldn't do the scene with him. I just had to keep looking at his forehead. There are people that you have that kind of relationship with. Where you have that kind of chemistry that they just make you. Uh, laugh. And when I was doing Arrested, it was Tony Hale who played Buster. And uh -huh. we would often come into a scene together. And so we'd be on our start mark and we, we would yeah. the AD be looking at us about to give us our cue. And like right as you could hear the dialogue, we're about to get the cue, Tony would, would immediately kind of go into his character of Buster. All of a sudden he'd be standing kind of there and, then his all chin, he, and he'd go and he'd raise go, his eyebrows. Ooh, yeah. like this, get ready. And as soon as he did that, I couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing. And so I'd come into scenes laughing already because uh -huh. I've just corpsed off stage. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Now, speaking of people that are unprofessional and can't keep it together, Laura Linney, your friend, um, boy, we finally got through that show. How have you managed to stay friends with somebody that undisciplined and untalented uh, for so many years? <laughs> I know, I know. Um, come here. So when am I going to see series three, part two? I've seen part one. I've seen, I love the show, by the way. This is a, really a, do a, 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 of Ozark, yeah? Ozark, yeah. yeah. Ozark, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, yes. No, we sh it's coming the end of April. Um, end of April. I'm not sure when this is going to air, but it, probably right about now. Um, and uh, that Laura, my goodness, is she good. Yeah. She's, uh, you guys have been friends for many, many, many years, right? And yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. she yeah. Uh, she's got so many great stories about you, and I'll bet you of her. But um, you know, I, it's just a ver uh, sorry, listener, for just a second. I, it, I'm listen. The listener can relate to this. Anybody in any working experience, work environment, if you love the people that you work with, you don't spend a minute working ever. Right. And yeah. she was yeah. just so incredible in sort of washing the whole set with her good vibes and positivity and warmth yeah. and uh do you think she'd say the same about you no 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 between the two of us we had we got to something right in the middle um <laughs> you guys worked together originally is that how you met yeah um i'm trying to think um yeah am i am i totally forgetting a big thing you guys did together or was it just a social no we did the crucible on broadway okay uh -huh. And then we did a film uh, called Kinsey. He was a, yes. a, a yeah, 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 researcher. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Laura was my wife in that. Yeah. And then we did another film with Antonio Banderas. Mm -hmm. She was having an affair with him. We yeah, were married. She cheated on me in Ozark too. You're still angry. I love that Liam is still angry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a movie. 
especially Antonio Banderas. He's so ugly. I mean, it's like, come on. <laughs> it's the hallmark of it. I don't want to embarrass you, Liam, but it's a hallmark of a great of a great uh, movie star that you barely remember uh, how many movies you've done or what they are. And and for us, like as as sort of like fans, we're like, this is so exciting to yeah. have somebody who. <laughs> well, do you know something? I'm 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 not blowing smoke up my ass here. Uh, just prior to Christmas past, I finished my one hundredth film. No wow. way. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. I couldn't believe so. I mean, that? Tony Hopkins used to say, anytime we see each other, give each other a hug. And uh, I said, how's it going, Tony? And he says, ah, great. He says, I haven't been found out yet. <laughs> I, I feel the exact same. But, Liam, I'm not great at math here, but <laughs> if you did four movies a year for 25 years in a row, that would give you 100 films. So, yeah. I mean, to do, listener, the, you know, do a, doing a film as an actor is a three-month shoot. So if you did four, I mean, that's that's working 12 months a year, every year for 25 nah, years. Not really, yeah. I mean, I started, uh, my first little film was 1977, Jason. Yeah. You know. So little little parts count, obviously. Um, so oh, yeah. Like, was that in Ireland or was were you living in England by the when you did your first film? I wanted to get into this. I was... Actually, living in Belfast, I was in the theater. There were bombs and armored cars going. Oh, it was just like aye, aye, aye. I, I'm, you know, it's um, it's a bit. It was a bit like Ukraine. I can yeah. imagine at the minute. Yeah. Um, and we were in. I was in this theater called the Lyric Players Theater, and uh, we we played uh, six nights a week during. The height of the troubles, that theater never closed. A couple of times there were bomb scares. Where wow. Soldiers would come in. We'd have to go out onto the street with the audience. And then, okay, all clear. Go back in again. And, and, and go back and do the show. And what is that experience like? Because, you know, for us, obviously, uh, you know, we, we, we're such pampered, uh, uh, you know, guys who have, have not had to experience anything like that. But for to do a play in an environment like that that does it, it must feel so far apart must does it even feel like show business or does it feel like you're I, what is your mindset to, doing a play day in and day out with real you know uh threat out just outside the doors well the, my my mindset was i was just so thrilled to be acting yeah and getting paid for it yeah, uh, and it was, it was literally as simple as that. And uh, you know, I, I was 24 when I turned professional, and you know, still pretty much a kid. And you, you know, all this shit was happening out in the streets and stuff. And uh, but I, I, I don't know. You just, I, I felt I was just, I was in a bubble, my own bubble of joy. Yeah, doing these plays. We did a play. We did a different play every four weeks. You know. Wow. We'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can be overwhelming, and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. For me, it's a feeling of just like a really tired, I, I feel like this inexplicable fatigue that I just can't seem to get out from under. Um, and maybe it's because I'm not taking enough time out for myself or you know, I'm not getting the kind of sleep that I feel like I want to get or I'm just burned out because of life, work, family, all of it. And it can feel overwhelming. And I ask myself the question all the time, what am I feeling right now? What is this thing? Am I sick? Am I, what is it? And I think it's that moment when you're asking yourself the question that you're actually getting closer to figuring out what you need to do. Because we associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. And, and BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. You know, for me, when I got to that moment, I was like, I want to talk to somebody about this because I'm feeling stressed out and I can't seem to figure out the root of it. And talking with a therapist is the best idea that I ever came up with. And I didn't come up with it. I didn't invent it. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. 
It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Smartless listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash smartless. That's betterhelp.com slash smartless. Thank you to all form for their support. You have probably heard us mention how much we love our Helix mattresses and their new sofa company, Allform. It does not disappoint either. Allform, okay, you ready? Okay, you're listening. Allform is, are you there? Okay, you're there. I'm just, all right, I'm trusting that you're there. Allform is the easiest way to customize a sofa using premium materials at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. You get to customize every aspect of your new sofa to ensure it's perfect for you and your home. That's nutty. No, it's not. It's all form. With armchairs, love seats, and up to eight seat sectionals, there's something for everyone. What's cool is that you can start small and buy more seats later on if you want your all form sofa to grow and change with you. All form sofas are also delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping, and you can assemble it yourself in just a few minutes. I'm on the road right now. What do I miss? I miss my all form. I miss my all form sectional. And when I am out getting a coffee here on the road and I'm getting my espresso, and I'm like, did they make this right? I have somebody send me a photo of the espresso colored legs from my all form chairs in San Fabric. And I go, okay, yeah, you got it right. So if getting a sofa without trying it in store sounds a little risky, you don't need to worry. You get a hundred days to decide if you want to keep it a hundred days. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for free and give you a full refund. Yes, a full re- So just chill. To find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash smartless. And Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash smartless. Allform, you love it already. Smartless is supported by Athletic Greens, the one thing with the best things. So you've got... No need to buy tons of supplements. You know, measure this one out. I'm going to get this, and i got to take two of these and four of these. and ba, 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 da, 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 da. Stop it. Athletic Greens is your all-in-one nutritional insurance, you dummy. I'm kind of talking to myself because that was me. I mean, I'm going so nuts with this thing. I'm even, I'm, I'm shaking it. I'm putting Athletic Greens in the water before a Zoom meeting. So people are like, well, what is this beautiful son of a gun doing? Drink? What is that? Cause it, whatever it is, it's working because he looks incredible. Were you born in a ring light? I mean, look at this guy. So what exactly is it? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all this stuff. It's lifestyle friendly, no matter your lifestyle, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. And right now, pull up a chair. Right now, and I'm gonna get real with you. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look after your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash smartless. I'm, I'm not trying to be heavy-handed. All I'm saying is it's athleticgreens.com slash smartless to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And now, back to the show. So there at 24, who who was the Liam Neeson for you at 24? Who were you looking at and going, yeah. my God, if I could have a career that lasts that long and hold that amount of rebel, relevance that long and be at the top of my game at that age, now that I'm 24, I, I hope to be that age and doing that well. Who was that, who was that North Star for you at that, at that point? God, that's a good question. I, well, certainly my ambition then would have been, I mean, it wasn't, I, I, I never thought of movies at all. That was really un, unattainable for some reason. Uh, but I, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to be in Britain's National Theatre yeah. mm-hmm. as, a, as a regular player, you know? Mm. 
That 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 was about the height. Who was the big shot in the in the in the National Theater at that at that point? Was it is does it go um, back too far to say John Gielgud? Oh, no. Maggie Smith, Judy yeah. Dench, yeah, Robert Stevens, uh, Colin Blakely, who was my hero. He was from the North of Ireland too. Yeah. But it was yeah, it was that. It was it was based on theater. And then I, was I Albert little... Finney doing uh, doing work in the National Theater at that uh, point? No, not he. Nineteen seventy six, he did a Hamlet. Yeah. Which was very, very good, which I yeah. saw. Uh, I'll bet, my God. Yeah, it just seems, uh, I've just been so lucky, Jason. I, and I genuinely mean that. It's just been. But, but, but you're doing theater, and, you're, and you say, and, and, and I'm glad Jason brought that up, that, and, and you said that you never had any ambition to do movies that felt like just probably so far away from where you were at that time. Sure, yeah. But then, but then you do a film in Belfast, your first film, and then the first time you're on a movie set, do you think like, yeah, I could see. <laughs> this seems yeah. about right. Like, did it did it feel comfortable? No, I, I didn't have that. The the first movie was for a, an evangelical outreach who were making a film in Belfast. Believe it or not, oh. of Pilgrim's Progress. Wow, uh, John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, and apparently the little film is still touring Africa and stuff. You know, to to get converts and stuff. Oh to, wow, wow. Evangelical uh, religion, and mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I remember there, there's a place uh, called Cave Hill that sort of overlooks the city of Belfast, and I was playing Jesus Christ. Sure, mm -hmm. okay, and yeah. I'm actually I actually I'm crucified, so I was on a cross with a fake crown of thorns and stuff in my hands, with you know makeup, you know false nails stuck in them and stuff, <laughs> and. Mm. and I remember thinking, why, why are they not rolling the camera? Why are they not saying action and stuff? And they were all, uh, the team of the evangelical people, they were all praying. Oh, wow. And I was standing there and I was like, my arms were getting <laughs> so shaky. No and I'm looking down in Belfast and I'm seeing armored cars going up and down and sirens going and stuff. I'm thinking, this is fucking crazy. But <laughs> I love it. Yearning for a nice little one act. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, and you're thinking. You're thinking. I finally made it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so funny. So you, but you. So then you move to England and you start and you start your film career in England, really in, in earnest at that point. Yeah. I mean, that was. No, I uh, I moved down to Dublin. Okay. And was fortunate enough to do a couple of plays there, and then I joined the Abbey Theatre, which was Ireland is Ireland's national theatre, I guess. I uh, was there for a while, and I did uh, a production of Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. And yes. John Borman, the uh, film director who lives in Ireland, he came to see it, and he was putting together this film, Excalibur, about oh, yeah. uh, Arthurian legends. And, and he asked me would I play Sir Gawain, and I was in this film and uh, with the shining suits of armor. Myself, my best buddy, Kieran Hines, was... Uh, wow, Sir Lot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and the, the the bug really got me down. This I thought this is just. But it must the be. Best. I mean, you, you start your first film role. You're playing Jesus. I mean, everything after that is kind of a step <laughs> down. I mean, you know, when he comes to you, he says, "Do you want to play this night?" You're like, "Guy, I was Jesus in the last one." So how do you even prepare an audition to play Jesus? I mean, yeah. practicing your faces in the mirror playing Jesus Christ. I would not really know where to where to go. How did you even research that? You know? Yeah, I don't know how he, uh, I can see the, the, the gentleman's face, Mr. Anderson. I, I think it was Ken Anderson who was in charge of this little outreach. And I, 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 I didn't do an audition. I just met him and uh, he knew I was Catholic, Irish mm -hmm. Catholic. And uh, we never really spoke about professional questions. And, and, uh, and this shoot was only about three weeks or something, you know. Uh, it, it, you just reminded me there. I, I had a vision of Will. Didn't you play Jesus Christ uh, on Arrested for one of your I illusions? Did. Didn't Job had a, like a some sort of a religious themed illusion? And I remember you in some sort of a loincloth. Yeah, and then I went into the cave, and yeah, right. I was going to come back, uh, and then I got stuck in there, and, <laughs> <laughs> and started whining. 
Yeah, it was yeah. a really, <laughs> it was a very, uh, not a very well thought out uh, illusion by my And character. you ate nothing but uh, uh, plums and turnips for a few weeks just <laughs> yeah. to, to prepare for that scene, and they right? Ended up, they ended up finding me because I got, there, I, there was a false uh, uh, sort of back on the, the, the cave that I had put on the stage. And then uh -huh. they ended up. Uh, they were uh, the, one of those storage facilities, and, one, and they were they were doing one of those uh, 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 faux, um, you know, those shows where they go into storage facilities and they auction oh, off yeah. all the stuff, yeah, and yeah. they find yeah. this rock, and they find me living in there. Oh boy! Uh, sort of months later, I've been even stuck thinner. In this, yeah, in this case. and I was very thin at the time. Uh, and then, uh, um, but I, so Liam, you mentioned uh, uh, Tony Hopkins, and for Tracy in Wisconsin. By the way, Liam, if you're not, I, I don't imagine you're a listener of the podcast, but Tracy is. Sean's sister in Wisconsin. So anytime we mention yes. something that people might not know, we 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 talk to Tracy and explain to her specifically the inside baseball of uh, of showbiz. Yeah. So so Tracy right. Tony Hopkins is uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, and you worked together the first time I imagine on the Bounty. Is that right? That's right. It was the Bounty, and we shot it in uh, Morea, which is an island, beautiful island, just off Tahiti. Oof. And. Uh, Oh, my God. I turned 31, so I turned 70 in June of this year, so that's a God. bunch of years ago. First know? of all, you look incredible. God. Please yeah. let me yeah. be uh, as, yeah, at 70. Yeah, you my look God, incredible, you look but great. I know. it's a, But but so you, you meet, so you're there, and you're, you've only made a few films at that point, am I right? You made sort of five or six films? Yeah, I'd, I'd done some stuff in Ireland and some miniseries in, in England. And but now you're you're there and you're in Tahiti with uh, with Tony Hopkins and Mel Gibson. Tony and Mel, Daniel Day, Lewis, uh, a bunch of great uh, British actors. And you had trouble casting it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Real trouble. But yeah, but you made do. What was that experience like making? I loved that. I bring it up just because I loved that film so much. I remember as a as a youth, I, I watched it many times. Oh gosh, um, yeah, it was it was it was good. It was six day weeks, and uh, I just we all just loved Tony because he, as well as being you know uh, Captain Bly, he played brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Um, he took he took care of us. He took care of his crew, and a lot of the crew were were guys just fresh out of drama school in England. Mm -hmm. You know, first job, and there you are in Tahiti. You know, mm -hmm. and um, but Tony just took care of us, and I never forget that quality he had. And uh, we had a, a lovely, a great director, Roger Donaldson, new uh, from New Zealand. But he and Tony didn't get on terribly well because he would do endless takes. Like, I remember one day, 27 takes of hoisting the princess, <laughs> Tahitian princess, up onto mm -hmm. the bounty. Oh, God. Like, 27 takes, and the, the sun beating down and stuff. And um, what's the point of my story? I, I, <laughs> it, it was just great. It was a great experience. But, but we all started developing that. What's the opposite of cabin fever when you're surrounded by water all mm -hmm. the time? There's, a, there's a, a scientific, there's a medical name for it. So... If somebody sent you out a newspaper from Britain or Ireland, you would read this from cover to cover. Sure. And then someone would, uh, you, you'd give it to your friend to read to, you know. By this stage, the, the newspaper's a week old, <laughs> 10 days old. <laughs> and then you'd start, to, I'd say, Richard, where's my paper? I said, but, but you read it, you, you finished it. I, I, it doesn't matter, I want it back. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, and we were there for three months. So we were just all starting to get on each other, other's nerves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you watch The Bounty today, do you do you think you would have notes for your performance? Has your as your mm -hmm. style of acting changed over the years? Uh, that 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 presupposes that you watch what you do. Are you one of those actors that, that watches what you do? Because <sighs> some some don't like to. Uh, no, um, I don't. I do. I, I like to say. I, 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 um, at least once. I mean, sure. if I'm playing the lead, yeah, yeah, I, I I'll watch it at least a couple of times. But that's it. This is I, while I, you're shooting, right? You'll watch one of the playbacks to see if you're kind of on the right track. No, I I, I don't do that, Jason. Yeah. I don't unless it's some technical thing where the the director needs me to be right, on the right. left, and I think no, I should be on the right of this sure. character, for example. But you'll watch the final product, though. I yeah yeah, yeah. I would watch it. 
So what about your, so what about your style? I, I, I just say, I asked that because I'm so, I get so cringy when I look at the old stuff that I've done and I say, oh my God, yeah. I do it so differently yeah. today because you have such a, such a wide body of work. I'd imagine it would be pretty fun or scary or what for you to look at all the stuff you've done way back when. Oh God. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's overacting, isn't it? I don't know if you ever feel that. Every, anytime I see something, I think, yeah. oh, God. That's what I notice I try to do is do less and less every year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I do something, I, I used to, when I was younger, would watch um, would watch it once, and now mm -hmm. I don't watch anything I do. And if somebody comes up to me and says, that was really good, I'll check it out. But if nobody says that to me, I don't need to see it. <laughs> yeah, but Sean, yeah. <laughs> Sean, Sean, you were on a very popular uh, comedy uh, sitcom for many years. The Millers? Yes. Yeah, The Millers that we were on together. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, we... You were you were like in the, you know in the top one of the top shows for for many years and it was it would be hard to avoid that. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this. So how how did you avoid that? Did you you must have seen episodes of your show when it was on the air because it was kind of everywhere. Yeah, Liam, take a seat just for a second. Um, I <laughs> would um, <laughs> no, I I would want I would uh, yes, you're right. It would the reruns when they used to have reruns and all that stuff, and I it, it is hard to avoid. But the reboot of the Will and Grace uh, yeah. three seasons, yeah. I haven't seen one episode just because really? just like everybody else. I was there. Yeah, just like everyone else. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. So you wouldn't have viewing parties, Sean, of your no, of your stuff. God. No, maybe when I was like 27 and uh -huh. I was on it. 20. Liam, I want to ask you something. The, you know. With the because you mentioned hundred films, it's just an unbelievable accomplishment. There has to be an award for that or something, or we'll make one for you and send it. Um, and by but, the way, that includes you know narrating documentaries. And stuff yeah, like but that, that's you know? just hey, and let's not forget the one you did with my sister called Satisfaction, where she played a little rock and roll star. And wait what, a second, did, oh Is yeah, that true, oh yeah. Yes, she played a, she played the lead of a band and what what did you I forget Oh I saw that. Did movie. you play a, the the manager the band manager or something? No, I I was a retired. Ex, kind of Keith Richards uh -huh. sort of guy. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they wanted me to manage them, or so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. did not submit that that year for Academy consideration, did you? No, no, <laughs> no. I don't Wait, think... Jason, I remember that film. That was your sister's kind of breakout attempt yeah. from yeah. Family Ties. I remember that. Yeah, film too. I think uh, Julia Roberts was in the film too. I think. Julia was, was it like too? thirty years ago? Yeah, must have been. Time. Has to Julia, be I know Julia was Julia was nineteen. Wow. So that made me. I was 30, 34. How do you? You're crazy with numbers. How do you remember thirty one years old, nineteen years old? He's like Will Arnett. Are you one of those people that can remember what you did like April of last year versus June of last no, year? No, no, that I can't. Will Arnett and can. I can. Yeah. Names, names too. I'm, I'm the older I get, I have real trouble with names. And uh, even if I'm calling my sisters, I have three sisters. <laughs> Get their names confused. I know Honestly, it's tough. I it is tough. I know. Jason's the same with names. Ja well, Jason's the same with faces. I was just going to say. Right, Jason. I think I discovered my uh, smallest dog uh, yesterday, who, you know, we've had for eight years now. Yeah. I think he's got fa uh, facial blindness, right? Whatever mm -hmm. that thing is. He, he barks him? at me every day. Sure. And uh, usually about 30 seconds after he just saw me last. And yeah. he'll look at me like I'm a stranger that's just broken in through the through the side window and I'm coming in to do a lot of damage. I'm like, guy, I just fed you. <laughs> the actor in you wants desperately for him to recognize you. <laughs> Please. I walk around with my head shot and it's signed. And he doesn't want it. <laughs> I watched you always have a stack of headshots with you, which I li I admire. I think that takes a just lot to of guts. Just try to disarm some sort of unfriendly. Yeah. yeah. And, but Jason, your dog's interesting. Maybe, maybe it's it, that, that is interesting. I yeah. adore dogs. I do too. That's fascinating. I do too, but not this one. Jason, by the way, speaking of your dog, the, I met this guy yesterday, you know, Frank, your dog. Uh, My top dog? Your top dog. Uh, I met a guy yesterday, and this is a true story. I forgot to tell you what he said. My dog is Jason's dog, Frank's brother. And I said, no kidding. And he said, yeah, the guy who I... Uh. Oh, yeah. first of all, my dog's name is Hank. Nice Hank, to meet right. you, not yeah, Frank. <laughs> I know, and I know. so Sorry. his Sorry, dog Frank. is related to my dog, Hank. Now, What's this my dog, dog's name? Your dog's name is... is uh, Petrol. Nice chai. See, Peter. So you, didn't, you didn't remember uh, either. Chan... Bella. 
Bella. Oh yeah, Bella. 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 So uh, yeah, now that that's my other dog, who's uh, he recognizes me right away. He's very loving, very lovely. Um, I don't have a problem with him. Yeah. Anyway, Sean, we we all cut you off. Sean, go. No, please. I just was interested in our guest. favorite color, Liam. Uh, is, did I guess it? <laughs> did I guess it, Sean? <laughs> no. Now you've told us your funny theater story. What's your funny movie story? <laughs> He's the worst, yeah, Liam. I'm so Actually, sorry. I don't, want, I don't want to get into movie stories, but I'm surprised Sean hasn't asked this yet because I'm fascinated at one of the great films of all time, Schindler's List, and, yeah. and how that experience came to be yeah. for you. Well, I, I mean, was going to ask that too. I know. I, I'm I know everybody wants question. to know it, but I don't know this, any stories, and it's one of my favorite films. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was living out in uh, Los Angeles at the time, and I, my agent sent me this script, which was just breathtakingly mm -hmm. horrible and beautiful and incredibly well-written. And I knew Steven Spielberg a little bit. Was it Eric Roth or Steven Zalian, one of the two? Steve Zalian. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Steve Zalian. And, uh, and I had read for Steven with a bunch of kids when he was casting Empire of the Sun. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Christian Bale's and first they, movie, right? I, yeah. I guess he remembered me. And he was, so I was asked to go in and meet him for Schindler's List. And uh, and I had, uh, you know, because it's set in the 1940s, I hired a 40 suit and I tried to uh, keep my hair short and stuff. And and, uh, and I spent about two, two and a half hours with Stephen. And Stephen had a camera. We were It was just he and I in a room. And I prepared a couple of little speeches from the film, the script. And, uh, and then after it was over, he said, thank you very much. And I felt great. I thought, well, if I don't get this, I've spent... Two and a half, three hours with one of the great yeah. movie makers of our mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then I went to yeah, I went to New York after that to do a play. I had to I had to get on the stage again. I, I thought you were going to say then I went to Ed DeBevix and got a drink. <laughs> 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 but sorry. So you go to New York to do a play. How long do you make you wait? Well, it was quite a few weeks. I was doing this play where I met my wife. It was called the play was called Anna Christie. Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. I met my wife and Stephen and his wife, Kate, and Kate's mum came to see the play. Ah. And they came backstage afterwards, which was very sweet of them. And uh, I opened my door and I was half undressed and stuff. I said, oh, my God, Stephen, gee, I'm sorry, let me put a robe on or something. <laughs> and Kate's mum was quite emotional, quite teary after the, the performance, the play. And I went and just gave her a hug. Apparently, on the way, when they, when they were left and they were driving back home, uh, Kate said to Stephen, that's just what Schindler would have done. Now, Stephen told me, no, it was your audition, you know, uh, <laughs> that got you the part, but uh, I like the story of, you know, that's what Schindler would have done. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what, what's, the, what's the great quote from uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance? When, uh, when the legend becomes fact, mm -hmm. print the legend. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to think it's uh, because I hugged Kate's mom, you know, that got me the part. Yeah, that's great. And now, a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you in part by GoodRx. Have you, have you noticed rising prices on basically everything I have, especially on essentials like uh, gas, groceries, and utilities? Well, now it's a great time to use GoodRx to at least save on your prescription costs. How? You probably asked or thought. With GoodRx, you can instantly compare prescription prices at pharmacies in your neighborhood and find discounts that could save you up to 80%, 8-0. GoodRx is free and easy to use and works whether you do or do not have insurance. Even if you have insurance, GoodRx may actually beat your copay price. <laughs> That's crazy. Beat your copay price. That's, that's great. Get this. You can check GoodRx online or on their app, which just happens to be one of the most downloaded medical apps. And from there, you can find prescription savings at over 70,000 pharmacies nationwide, like uh, like your CVS's or Kroger or Walgreens, Rite Aid, Vons, Walmart, and more. I'm not going to list more things. The point... Then you take the money you saved with GoodRx and put it towards filling your tank 
or your shopping cart or anything else that's gotten more expensive because we get it. So for simple, smart savings on your prescriptions, check GoodRx. Go to GoodRx.com slash smartless. That's GoodRx.com slash smartless. GoodRx.com slash smartless. GoodRx is not insurance, but can be used in place of insurance, Medicare and Medicaid. In 2021, GoodRx users saved 81% on retail prescription prices. Thanks to KiwiCo for their support. It's springtime, and it's, so many questions come up. And my kids are like, oh, why do flowers bloom? Or how do caterpillars turn into butterflies? Why is the day longer? Why is it warmer now? Spring brings along new curiosities and a chance for kids to connect with the world around them. And there are so many opportunities to learn, and it's the perfect time for discoveries. What I'm getting at is KiwiCo delivers monthly science and art projects that celebrate a child's natural curiosity and sparks a love for lifelong learning. And discover subscription lines for kids of all ages, ranging from infants and preschoolers all the way to teens. Grown-ups are welcome to join in on the fun, too. And as a parent, it can be really hard to find creative ways to keep your children busy and challenged that don't involve a screen or some kind of a tablet. This is why I love KiwiCo. It keeps them off of that stuff. KiwiCo does the legwork for you so you can spend quality time tackling projects together that don't involve a screen. I can't say that enough. So they have these projects you can do a bunch of different stuff. They have this um, desk lamp that you can build, this articulated desk lamp that kind of looks like the Pixar guy, you know, or they have like um, uh, an electric pencil sharpener. My kids love that because they can build it and then they can use it. And there's a sense of accomplishment at the end of it. Step into spring and celebrate the season of discovery with a KiwiCo subscription. Get 30% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash smartless. That's 30% off your first month at kiwico.com slash smartless. Smartless, um, I don't know if you know this, we get support from Tiki Brand. So, mosquitoes, I mean, full stop Am I right? They are annoying, especially if you're trying to spend time outside. The mosquitoes, they're everywhere. And if you're trying to spend really great quality time with friends or family in the evening, mosquitoes can be such a pain. Well, Tiki brand Bite Fighter LED string lights will not only beautify your backyard, but also provide mosquito repellency. Because here, here's what it is, and this is, you'll get the ambience of string lights and the proven mosquito repellency the brand is known for. Yeah, this is a one-of-a-kind innovation. No other string light brand has or can offer this unique benefit. Tiki gives you a sense of freedom to go out and enjoy your living environment and get rid of those pesky mosquitoes. The repellency diffuser pods last up to 200 hours. This equates to 90 days or one Jason Bateman question. The Bite Fighter diffuser pods can be replaced after their 200-hour lifespan and can be switched off, allowing you to enjoy the glow without wasting repellent. Plus, configuration can be customized for protection in yards or on decks and patios. This is what it sounds like without the Bite Fighter diffuser pods. Ah, oh my God. Ah, ah. Guys, let's go inside. This is what it sounds like with the Bite Fighter diffuser pods. Ah. Go ahead, Jason. Ask your question. Turn on ambience. Turn off mosquitoes. Available at tikibrand.com. And now back to the show. Working with, uh, you've worked with so many great directors. Yeah. Um, uh, I, can you remember anything that, from any of them, I imagine Spielberg would be right near the top of it, that really kind of took your breath away like ah that is the difference in great directing versus good directing was it, is there anything that was super noticeable about what he or any of the other incredible directors you've worked with have, have done their ability to to make a set comfortable um uh the way in which they work with the crew uh anything that that stands out does maybe even specifically about steven with that film because it was just so finely done 
It was interesting with Stephen because it was the first film he had done without using a storyboard. Normally oh, wow. he always uses mm. a storyboard and you can go up and see the mm. cartoons drawn of what you're going to shoot. Yeah. He didn't. And, he, you know, he was telling the story of his, his people, yeah. his mm-hmm. Jewish people. And he was incredibly nervous. He felt the responsibility of the story he was telling you. Yeah, and I remember the first day, uh, we we finished the play here in New York on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I flew out on Monday, and I, as far as my memory, as far as I can remember, it was either Tuesday morning or the Wednesday morning, like 5.30 in the morning. We were at the gates of Auschwitz, the real Auschwitz in Poland. And I think the World Jewish Congress, I think that's the right name, didn't give Stephen permission to shoot inside Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. But the production design team did a brilliant job. We shot outside of Auschwitz, but made it seem as if it was inside Auschwitz. Right, I remember that story. And uh, I I was dressed in a big fur coat and hat and nice and warm, even though it was unbelievably cold. And this train was coming in and all these extras were coming out as Jewish people and German... um, extras with guard dogs and it was it was terrifying it was terrifying and uh i remember i I was waiting to do my bit and i walked down you know by the barbed wire fences and and looking inside of the huts that you know the the jewish people were were crammed into all those years ago and i was just looking and branko lustig who was one of the producers he's dead now god rest him but he came up to me and uh, said, how do you feel? And I said, um, yeah, I'm okay, Branko. You know, I'm, I'm warm enough and uh, just looking forward to starting, you know. And we were looking at the huts and he pointed out to a hut and said, see that one there, third one from the left. I'm making this up now. But he said, that's where I was. No wow. way. At wow. the age of six. Well, I just lost it. Wow. Yeah. I lost it. My knees started to shake, and I thought, "Fuck! This isn't acting. This isn't a fucking movie. This is, this is a piece of history we're telling here, and I'm not worthy." I just kept saying to myself, "I'm not fucking worthy. I'm, I'm a fucking Irish actor. I should go back to Ireland, go back into the theatre. What the fuck am I doing here? Dressed up in this big fur coat, and here to save these Jewish people? From... I it's just it was terrifying." Mm. And uh, but Stephen was great, uh, and, and it's a little scene where I I pull one of these girls, little Jewish girls, up, and because these uh, prisoners shouldn't have been sent to Auschwitz, they're supposed to be working in my factory because Oscar Schindler had this armaments factory, yeah, right? Right. and he was there to save their lives. Otherwise, they were going to die in Auschwitz. So I go up to this guard and say, "How dare you do this? These are my people. They have to go back." And I'm shaking, like, I'm, and I'm, I pull a little girl up, and I, I was doing it too gently because I, she was freezing. Yeah, mm-hmm. this little actress. And uh, Stevens came over to me and said, "You got to just you, listen, stop the niceness, grab her, pull her up. Her life's at stake here, you know." Yeah. So I had to. I apologized to her. I said, "Look, I'm going to grab you quite roughly and pull you up so that this guard sees you." She was only about seven or eight years of age, mm. and. Uh, I'm supposed to say to the guard, I need, I need this little girl, look, those small hands so they can clean the inside of, oh, of metal casings right. for, yeah. for the yeah. armaments. But I could never quite say the line right. You're speaking in German at this point, right? It's supposed to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. in English. Um, but anyway, I'm rambling, Jason. I, I, they're, they're no, all. No, I love this. All the, all the directors are different. You know, they're all. Well, listen, I, Liam, I, I have such a. You just reminded me of the first time I saw that film because I've seen it a few times, like a lot of people, and so incredibly moving hearing you talk about. I can't imagine feeling that, and it comes across that sense of responsibility that you felt in that moment. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was at the uh, theater, the old Chelsea Theater. Is I don't think it's called that anymore, but on. 23rd at 8th Avenue. I was living in New York. and Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah and, and I remember uh, I was seeing that film and there was that moment where there was the chaos of everybody coming off the train and stuff and everybody's freaking out. Nobody knows what's going on. And at that very yeah. moment in the theater itself, the fire alarm went off. So they've got those little lights that are blinking oh my and God. there's a sound going, woo, woo, and the blinking. And it was, it, it was almost like it happened. Wow. 
uh, you know, that it was part of the f- film, and people started freaking out in the theater, and people yes. were openly weeping because it just heightened an already very heightened moment. Yeah. Yes, and it made yes. everybody, and it forever changed the way, it it, it, it it was just such a visceral thing to actually have happen in that moment. And, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you what do you uh, what do, what do you get into that is uh, that is not really really hard work like you usually do? Yeah, are you still boxing too? Or is is that part of your regimen? Um, I I have a bag. Well, I have a gym and I I, I use a bag sometimes, but uh, I just like to I just like to read. I'm an avid reader, you know. Really? Yeah. Wow, you guys are we're very similar, Liam. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Well, no, Liam and I no. are very similar. I like to read, and I also have a bag right out the door here. And Jason has a bag, but he keeps it behind the toilet, and he just goes in there for a couple <laughs> minutes at a time, um, or he plays past the bag with one of his Hollywood friends. But don't um, use too much of it. Yeah, I got to get through the night. Yeah, uh, Liam. Um, what I would like to ask this question. What drugs have you dabbled in? Because here's the thing. When you, here's the thing. Here's He's the our thing. secret weapon, when, Liam. He's the listen, best. Keep going. Sorry, Sean. No, please. When you're doing, like you said, oh, 100 things, like 100 films or whatever, docs and everything. Sure. And you're traveling and the time changes, yeah. and the night shoots and this stuff. When you were younger, you're like, how am I going to get through this? You had to have like partaken into something to get through all of those Many, many films of just endless months Are you of Cindy Adams? What is going yeah, on? Do you want him to admit to <laughs> I'm drug open. use? I'll talk to you about the... We've talked about the drugs we took. Go I, ahead. I took tell, mushrooms. Tell Rona Barrett what the last time you participated <laughs> in uh, in some sort of uh, illicit <laughs> drug use. <laughs> you don't have um, to answer that if you don't want. It. Okay. I'll bet. I'll bet. Uh, I'll bet. I'll bet the way you stay up and peppy nowadays is uh, is is all that exercise. I'll bet you eat well. Um, sounds like you're staying nice and sane with lots of reading. It doesn't sound like you're doing a lot of things to slow yourself down or hurt yourself, huh? No, that's a bad idea. It's very boring. I mean, I I do I fly fish. I love oh, to really? do that whenever I get a chance. Wow. And, we uh, should hook you up with Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy he Kimmel. Likes to fly fish Jimmy is, yes. Oh, I, I'm going to go to Jimmy's uh, lodge sometime when? this year. I don't know when. I was supposed to go last year. Oh. There's a big group of us going uh, in a few months. We're going to send yeah. you the, the invite. Come on up. We're going to go this summer. And you can teach are you, me. How. Are you really? Yeah. yeah, swear to God. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it looks spectacular. It's, it's stunning. It's, it's, he's really done a great oh, job I with it. I can't wait. Oh, that's yeah. terrific. I can't wait. Wait, Sean, do you st- Sean, you still want to know about Liam's drug use, right? No, that's Oh, yeah, okay. sorry. Sorry, Sean. No, no, that's no. no. Right. Um, I, <laughs> you don't have to yeah. answer his garbage question, Liam. That's interesting. You just, you no, just, just, I, no it's, it's fair enough. And I'm not trying to avoid <laughs> it. I just, uh, certainly when I was in Ireland in the theater, yeah. After shows, we'd go to the local pub, you know, yeah. and have, I adored Guinness, absolutely adored it. Yeah. Same. And then you turn a certain age and it sticks to you. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You start oh, yeah. putting on weight and it's like, oh my God. Yeah. And I switched to red wine. I absolutely adored that. And yeah. yeah. Does that put, that puts on less, less weight, but there's the hangovers, not as fun. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. all that sugar. Uh, I stopped drinking eight. Yeah, just over eight years ago. Wow, and, uh, I must say I don't miss it. Oh, that's good. Same here, we, uh, Jason. We, we don't we don't drink. I don't, I don't drink. Uh, I don't drink basically out of vanity. I can admit that, <laughs> but uh, but that's but okay. What's, what's the remaining vices for for all of us? I mean, my it's pathetic with me. It's uh, it's yeah, it's like sugar um, and like crunchy salty snacks and uh, right. you know Jay. Yeah. Oh, golf. No pot gummies. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah gummies. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, is that a vice? I don't know. It's legal nowadays, Jason, right? Like, have you tried those, Liam? Have you tried the gummies with the THC in it? And the CBD. No, I have I have gummies with the CBD and, yeah, a, sure. and a little bit of melatonin. And I take those oh, every yeah. night. Yeah. Puts you right out. I, I do have trouble sleeping. Jason's got some other stuff for you, and the first yeah, one's free, first he one's says. first one's free. I'm just going <laughs> to just stay on afterwards. Let me get your P.O. box or something. You, you, people still use P.O. boxes? Sean, you like, you like weed. You like to smoke weed every once in a while. Well, I, don't, I haven't smoked in years. I can't smoke it anymore, but, um, but I, do, I do eat the, the gums. The gummies as well. You don't mind that. And then what's your other advice? You, like, uh, you don't drink coffee. Do you Donuts. drink coffee? Liam, are you a coffee guy? No, I, I, I give up caffeine. Um, no, it's so fucking boring. No, yeah. you're very disciplined. And, I, and I'm, I'm constantly this. Uh, it's a mug. Uh, what is that? I'm, I'm, okay, it's a Stanley mug. I adore them. It keeps uh, my black decaf tea hot for five or six hours. Oh, oh. and it's also my little security blanket. Do you know sure. what I mean? 
I take it on set. I try and get it into every movie. Oh, yeah. you do? You try to get in? Do you ever smash guys in the face with it? Because you're in these actors. <laughs> <laughs> Clash of the Titans. That's yeah. going to happen. That is um, going to happen. What are, you, are you doing anything currently that you're embarrassed of? Any any <laughs> crappy TV you're watching? Oh. Any? Uh, are you? You say you read a lot. Are you reading a comic book that you're not that you're not proud to reveal to anybody? No. Um, crime. I, I, I've, I'm I'm still into my Nordic noir crime. Oh no! Here oh, comes like, Will. Like Nesbo, Nesbo, and those guys. Yeah, Nesbo's good, and, yeah. and Henning Mankell, who passed away about four years ago. He, he was just extraordinary. And I just played uh, Philip Marlowe um, in my last film. Uh, so I, I had never read, much to my shame, Raymond Chandler before. So uh. I, I, I read most of his stuff for preparation, I guess. Will has met his match with the smokiest voice on this podcast. Yes, I know, God. Do you guys do any voiceover work? We've done three. We've done three films together. It should be no, and the other, and we've never met. And also, uh, we, were t we were talking before about Ray Fiennes. Uh, he also was in Lego Batman and played Alfred to my Batman. And we had a lot of scenes together. Oh, and I didn't have, know that. Yeah, and we have yet to meet. And I, uh, I'm yeah. just such a fan. I can't wait. Eyes terrific. Uh, uh, Liam, do you do any voiceover work other than uh, the 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 animation every once in a while? Are you the voice of any particular product uh, on mm -hmm. television? You do any commercial stuff? You know, because no, Will, Will no. talks about GMC trucks all the time, and uh, yes. <laughs> lucky for them, he's still doing it. I don't. I, I like doing documentaries, and uh, I've done quite a few of those. And, uh, but oh, products, wait. no. You should, my God. Liam, yeah. you would clean Yeah. Up. Have you done any of the Ken Burns documentaries? I, yes, I have, actually. During oh. lockdown, I did, uh, oh, there's one on Anne Frank, that's yeah. coming out. Oh, okay. that's cool. I played Anne Frank's father, uh, just a few lines, and the current one on uh, Benjamin Franklin, yeah. I think, has come out. I, okay. I have a small part. Is that one out yet or no? Not yet. Ken Burns is a genius. My yeah, gosh, yeah. He's brilliant. been on the show. He was an incredible. We guest. had him on. We had him yeah. on. Yeah, recently. you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. he's so erudite, and yeah. he's just. Um, did you see the Ali? The Ali Muhammad one? Ali one. I, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. And I, I, I have to say, and Muhammad Ali was, is, always will be my idol. Always yeah. was. I yeah, just that documentary is on. incredible. The one he did on World War II is incredible too, called The War. World War II, but mm. the, the, the American Civil War, I have to watch that at least once a year. Yeah. It's incredible. And I'm it came you. out, I don't know, 25 years ago yeah. or something. Well, you, I love that you that you love uh, Muhammad Ali because you were, and I mentioned before, you did you did box a little bit, amateur boxer, for a couple of years there. Yeah. You were, yeah, I, I started when I was nine. I think I had my last fight when I was like 17 or something. Wow, oh my and, God, uh, that's old enough to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was starting to hurt. It yeah, because like kids <laughs> punch each other all the time, but then you become a teenager and you got really, yeah. you got to really be pissed off if you're going to get into that because yeah. you can get hurt. So, but boxing, so you were boxing as a, as a, as a young adult or adult, uh, right? I mean... Well, at the age of 13, 14, I started to shoot up. I mean, I'm yeah. six foot four now. And That's I, amazing. I, yeah, then I guess it was about six foot three or something. And the punches were, yeah, they were starting to hurt, you know. And uh, I, I remember once coming, we, we had a tournament in my, our little local parochial hall in my hometown back in Ireland. And I was f boxing this guy. And I, I actually won the fight, but I felt my heart of hearts, I didn't win that fight. <laughs> but when I came out of the ring, my trainer said, okay, Liam, go, go on downstairs and put your clothes on. And, uh, and I was... I was and uh, fix your face. <laughs> I, I, but I, I, had, I, I didn't know what he meant. Clothes. Uh -huh. go, oh, go, no. Go down. I, it, it was weird. And that, that was like a, a kind of a strange concussion, you know? Mm. So that was that was my last fight. I, oh, wow. I knew enough to think, oh, fuck this, I'm, I'm getting out of this. You know, this I did it. I did a, um, uh -oh. a friend of ours, Lisa Kudrow, produced this show called Who Do You Think You Are? And it traces your ancestry. Yeah. Yes. Did she hit you hard in the face during yeah. the shooting of that? And all of my ancestors, are, you know, from Ireland, I'm Irish as well. And we went over to Ireland. Everybody is a drunk and a thug. Everybody fought and just well, there fights. there we go. Everybody. There's a great quote. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> We no, of my ancestors. Thanks, of Sean. my ancestors. Oh, my your ancestors. ancestors. Yeah. Not everyone I, in the country. No, not everybody Irish. But all my ancestors were just thugs and drunks. <laughs> and it's like, why is everybody, I don't know. Everybody just seems to be, lo loves to be in fights. Where, where are they from, Sean? Where, where do your family hail? Dingle, 
and um, oh, Dango, beautiful County Kerry, and yeah. Uh, yeah, all around. You ever go it, back there, it. Sean? Just for that sh the show I did. It just was, to fight. It's just, just to fight. <laughs> it's, for, it's so pretty over there, just, right? Oh, it's unbelievable. I think it's like the... Oh, uh, Dingle. Dingle's very, very special. My grandfather's from Dingle, and... Uh, they have was, beautiful and fruit from there, yes. the Dingleberries. Have you tried... No, <laughs> no Will. <laughs> I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Liam, we've taken way too much of your time. You're... you're oh God, it, it, no, no, it, no, you we could it. talk to you forever. You're just such a... Fascinating guy and, and, and one of those, just such a great performer and, and I'm just in awe of your talent. And, oh, and, shut and up, shut thank up. Thank you for no, saying that. No, it's true. And, such a kind, kind man, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, so thank you for spending some time with us on your off day here. Yeah. Thank you, Liam. Jason, can I say to you, I, I know I said this to you before when I saw you at the garden oh, a couple of years ago, three years ago or something. Please give... Victoria, your mom. Oh, my I love. God. Now he's showing off. This guy is the nicest guy in the world. He meets my mother one time on a Pan Am flight. She mm. was a stewardess for Pan, a flight attendant for Pan Am. Yeah. It, it, 20 years later, he runs into me. He's never met me before, but I guess she had mentioned when she had met him that she, she, I was her son. So this is 20 years later. We're, we're back back uh, at, at a Ranger game at Madison Square Garden. And yes. I, I see Liam Neeson. I'm like, oh, my God. I'd totally forgotten that my mother had said anything, that she'd met him. He stops me. He says, hey, hey, you're Jason. I met your mother X number of years ago on a plane. And how is she? Is she doing? Knew, remembered her name? I, it just knocked me out. And then when I told my mother that, she cried for a week. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so thank you so much for being such a kind man. No, please. And, and Justine, too. Please, please give him my I love. will tell her for sure. And it's, it, it's, it, and it's, it's something, and I, I can't quite remember, Jason, but it was a flight from either Los Angeles to London, Pan Am, which mm -hmm. doesn't exist, of course, yeah. or from London to L.A. I can't remember. And I was just, I was very vulnerable, not because I have a fear of flying. I don't. Something was happening, and for some reason, Victoria, your mom, spotted something in me, and she just took care of me. Yeah. She'd bring me tea and oh, check God. on me okay. every so often. And I'll just never forget it. You know, and I was... <laughs> She was these, look at both these very guys. special. Just writing jokes. As soon as you said, take care of me, they, both of them wrote about <laughs> well, no, well, six jokes Well, luckily he followed up and said with, with a cup of tea. <laughs> with luckily a cup of tea. Like, oh, they put their I pens down. To, yeah. yeah. No, she was okay. very accommodating. Uh, yeah. Well, that's very, very sweet. It's, it's so great. And again, uh, Liam, such a fan, and thank you so much yeah, for your time. Yeah, it was such an honor. Thank you. Honestly, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's an honor to, to talk with you, the three of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. you say hi to Laura if you talk to her before I do. I sure will. I love her so much. She's going over to Ireland, I think, in May to shoot a film. Oh, really? I'm going over there to shoot a film with my best dear friend, Kieran Hines. Oh, yeah. We're going to uh, shoot a film in Donegal. You're not killing anybody in that, are you? Oh, yeah. Quite, quite you are? Few, yeah, of course. Quite yeah. a few. <laughs> quite a few, he said. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Why do you think he is, took the part? Is the Pope a Catholic? Come on. <laughs> Uh, the great Liam Neeson, thank you so much, our thank friend. You, Thanks, guys. So nice of you to do this. Thank you, Liam. Oh, that's great. Thanks, boys. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye, See, you, bye, bye, See bye. you later. Oh, the great Liam Neeson. When he came on the screen, I was like, what? That's so, what? Liam Neeson. He's so, like, iconic. It's so crazy. When I was like, I, I wanted to have him on the show, and then they said, and, and Michael uh, MGT said, yeah, we're going to have Liam Neeson. He's going to do it. I thought, like... Is this really going to happen? Crazy. Liam yeah. yeah how would you do that, Willie? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I think he. I think that he thought. You know. I mean, he knew you a little bit, and he was such a fan. He talked about seeing us at the garden another time, and he wanted to come say hi, and he did yeah. not. And uh, uh, and his new movie, Memory, uh, comes out uh, April 29th. Um, which is uh, the guy. God, he's made. Over I didn't even get a chance to ask him about Star Wars. Oh I know, God, right. Sean. Yeah. Oh, I mean, too bad. There's list. not enough Star Wars in the world. I know. Thank God. <laughs> it's such a shame that we never had an opportunity to talk about <laughs> fucking Star Wars. <laughs> he was in so many Star Wars movies, and then he was like, a, he was one of those um, stormtroopers in Force Awakens. And you spent your time with Wrath of the Titans, the sequel <laughs> yeah. to Clash of the Titans. That's right. God, you're That's gonna right. lose. You're gonna lose your card. I swear. Sean, to God. I loved. I, I love it. I, I really, out of deference to you, I, I wanted to start it off by asking about theater stories because. Yeah, thank you. I have so many. Because he started in the theater. I know. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. I love. You'd think people would have like 
at the ready. Well, it really- turns out it, it it does start to feel like the only only embarrassing things in the theater happen to you. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, Kristen well, Chenoweth. Maybe and Kristen that's true. Chenoweth, and, and, and the time that you the poisoned Kristen. I forget how the story went, but but <laughs> maybe she just had an anxiety attack because the curtain call was such complicated blocking. So <laughs> let's just go back. So you came from either side of the. So it was sort of like a <laughs> by wait, entrance. Met- was it oh, a by? Oh, a what? Entrance? A by. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are we done? Bye. That's it. Bye. I don't endorse it. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.